The one thing we can definitively tell you about the work here is that we're unquestionably not qualified to carry it out. We aren't money people or business people or English teachers or community outreach leaders. We're two parents who arrived in Thailand tired, unequipped to do what God was asking us to do. Things have rolled out far more rapidly than we ever would have imagined, and every week seems to bring um, new challenges and developments. People are always asking, how can they be praying specifically for us and the work here? It's a question we're so grateful for because prayer is what sustains us. But to answer honestly requires transparency, and transparency often reveals the less beautiful side of things. Okay, I think one of the biggest things that we would need prayer for would be learning how to be in tune with God's will and to constantly be dwelling in His presence so that we know what He wants us to do on a daily basis and what He wants us to say and we just feel His Spirit and we just feel Him dwelling in us. Not even feeling, just know that He's there. Um, because I know that we're not supposed to go off a of feeling only. <laughs> Just learning how to be content in a constantly changing world, and I know that's a problem for everybody right now. Learning how to be patient and to work through what we've been given um, to do. So, like with the kids, to show them grace, because I think it's sometimes really hard to want to give and show grace, even though we've been shown so much grace. One of the harder things for us is one of the kids we've taken in does not like to be told no, even about the simplest, smallest things, that it just wouldn't make sense. When they are told no, they will start screaming at the top of their lungs, like so loud. You can hear it from outside with all the windows and doors shut. Our neighbor, our friend, as well as like they can hear it from inside their house. The ministry aspect of our lives in Thailand began a month and a half after arriving when God brought wind and sky to us from the slums of Bangkok. Within 11 months, the 11 months following, we ended up with four more Thai kids in our quickly shrinking home. So the conviction that Robbie and I both experienced that we were to establish a home for children was confirmed. But then God expanded that vision. He put within us the desire to have a ministry base in the Commerce District of Sukhothai where we could reach people where their needs are. And so an English tutoring school was born, along with a church plant and the semi-equivalent of what might be considered a Meals on Wheels in the U.S. I am the main person doing the English tutoring program over at the English class. I'm going to be really honest, I don't feel qualified at all. Uh, I have my teaching English as a foreign language certification, but it still doesn't really come natural to me to be like a classroom teacher. You give me hands-on stuff, and I'm better with that, but to try to teach you how to speak English. <laughs> anyway, um, the wonderful thing about having the English class there is the, the children that come in, um, each one of them is from a different background. Another thing we do at the, uh, the Mission Post that we could use a lot of prayer for is we go out and we serve food to different families around the community. And these are families that don't have much in one way or another. Another thing, for me at least, is that it's really hard to like get into a spiritual state of mind. So in the mornings, especially like on school days, my mind is not on what I'm studying, it's more on like like what I have to do. I have to get up soon and get ready for school. It's really hard to just get into that state of mind. Like I'm 
you know, getting to know God better now and learning more right now, but my mind is always somewhere else. I don't learn as much as I wish I could from my morning studies. He also led us to a property where we can officially open a children's home, which we're calling Bantayim, which means Smiling Eyes Home. It's on a beautiful um, piece of property, nine and a half acres. It has three houses and a small cottage, as well as some partially constructed buildings, which could, if we finish them off, uh, serve as additional housing. He's provided us Thai Bible workers to help us there on that property, and a Thai friend uh, to help with the cooking at the office in town, which is 20 or so minutes away. And while we don't want to be greedy, one of the things we'd love people to join us in praying for is additional help. We're currently on seven days a week, 365 days a year. There's no stepping away from your ministry for a rest or a reprieve when a large portion of that ministry lives right in your home. And when the day of rest comes around each week, we're so grateful for a church nearby uh, to worship in. But the reality is we then must be the church, the children's classes, the song services, the sermons. It's all part of the package included in the, the weekly load. Um, we aren't sharing any of this to incite a pity party, but to express why the need here for additional workers is so great. We're exhausted, but we aren't burned out. We want to be here. We want to carry out the will of God. We want every possible person to know and experience His love, and we're committed for the long haul. But prayer for the provision for the finances for the children's home property to be paid off and for workers to be willing to come is what I think all of us truly crave. <laughs> ผมได้มาที่นี่แล้วผมได้มีเพื่อนเล่นหนูพ่อหนูได้พาหนูมานี่แล้วก็แล้วก็หนูได้กับว่าจะกับพระเจ้าแล้วก็มีเพื่อน